Alright, so let's take a look at some more factoring of trinomials, uh, especially we'll do some more examples and we'll look at some special cases uh, when certain things happen looking at trinomials. So first off, let's just remind ourselves about negative factors. We ran into these when we first looked at some of our trinomials, but this is just a reminder that positive values can have negative factors and vice versa. For example, if you're dealing with the trinomial 2x squared plus 12x plus 6, when you build your x method, you'll have a times c on the top, which will be 12, and you'll also have 12 on the bottom. When you're looking for your factors, remember you're looking for two factors that multiply to make the top number and add to make the bottom. For 12, you need to remember that your factors are 1 and 12, 2 and 6, 3 and 4, but they also include negative factors, negative 1 and negative 12, negative 2, negative 6, negative 3, and negative 4, because you need to remember that a positive multiplied by a positive will give you a positive result and a negative multiplied by a negative will give you a positive result. So always be thinking about whether or not your factors could be positive or negative when you're building your factors for your X method. So let's look at this value uh, example where we have X squared minus 9X plus 14. This is a case where the B value is negative. So real quick, We'll blow up this and we'll just sort of fill out our x factor. So our value of a is 1, our value of b is negative 9, and our value for c is 14. This means our top value is of a times c will be 1 times 14, or 14, and our b value will be negative 9. As we're looking for factors, let's again list our factors of 14. And to do that, we'll do that just off here to the right. So 14 can be split into 1 and 14, 2 and 7. It can also be negative 1, negative 14, negative 2, and negative 7. When we look at adding these values up, we can see that our b value of negative 9 is only accomplished when we add negative 2 and negative 7. So our values for the rest of our x will be negative 2 and negative 7. We'll shrink that down, move it out of the way, and real quick, we'll run through the rest of the problem. We have four terms that we're building. Our first term is x squared, our last term is 14, and our middle terms will be negative 2x and negative 7x. When we factor out values, we'll get x times x minus 2. We can then factor out a 7 and get x minus 2 again, because we're dividing 14 by negative 7. We factor out our common factor of x minus 2, and once again, we're remembering our phrase GCF times what's left, and we get x minus 2 times x minus 7 for our final answer. Let's go ahead and look at our next special case. In this case, we're looking at a trinomial that has a GCF. In this case, our GCF will be 2. So the first thing we always have to do is remember to pull that GCF out. So in this case, we have a GCF of 2, and when we pull that out, we get 2 times x squared plus 7x plus 12. And we always need to remember to pull out our GCFs before we deal with our ABC value in the X method. So shrink that down, move it back out of our way, and we'll bring up our X method and look at it. So A value of our new equation will be 1 b value 7, c value 12, our top is a times c, which is 12, our bottom is our value for b, which is 7. 
if we look at our factors of 12, we have 1 and 12, 2 and 6, 3 and 4, and we should be able to see that 3 and 4 will multiply to give us 12, but add to give us 7. So we have a positive 3 and a positive 4. Shrink that down, move it out, and let's finish our problem real quick. So our four terms, we get our very first term, x squared, and we have our last term of 12. You'll notice once again, I'm building everything off of the second equation that I got after pulling out our GCF of 2. My second term will be plus 3x, my third term plus 4x, and now we'll go ahead and pull out our new GCFs. I'll break our problem up into the first section and the second section, and we'll get x times x plus 3, and we'll pull out a 4 from the second section, and once again get x plus 3. As always, we can just check, see if our parentheses are the same. If they are, we know we're doing something right. So I'll pull out my common factor of x plus 3, and we'll multiply that by what's left, remember GCF times what's left, which in this case is x and positive 4. So x plus 3 times x plus 4. Let's move on to a new case. In this case, we're dealing with a trinomial that has a negative a value. One of the rules we haven't really talked about very much is the fact that when we're factoring a trinomial, the value of a needs to be positive. In this case, we'll look at negative x squared plus 8x minus 12 and treat it as if it has a greatest common factor. In this case, the GCF that we're dealing with is negative 1. If we pull a negative 1 out of our equation, we get x squared minus 8x plus 12. This gives us a positive a value here, in a, a positive 1, that we can use with our x factoring method. So, we'll move this back out of the way, bring down our x, and let's fill it in. So, our value for a using our new equation right here will be 1, value for b is negative 8, and value for c is positive 12. A times C gives us positive 12 up top, negative 8 on the bottom. Our factors of 12 once again are 1 times 12, 2 times 6, negative 1 times negative 12, negative 2 times negative 6, 3 times 4, and negative 3 times negative 4. Since we're looking to add up <coughs> to negative 8, we should be able to see that negative 2 and negative 6 are the two values that will add up to negative 8. So, negative 2 on the left side, negative 6 on the right, and we're ready to move on. Move that out of our way, and let's build our four-term equation again. So, our first term, once again, coming from our edited equations, x squared, my second term, negative 2x, coming from my x phrase. My third term, negative 6x, again coming from my x phrase. And my final term, 12, coming from my original equation. And we can once again factor out by, factor by grouping. I'll group my first two together and my second two together. Factor out an x and we get x minus 2. We'll pull out negative 6 and again get x minus 2. As always, we can double check, make sure our parentheses are the same, means we're doing something right. So I'll bring out my new common factor of x minus 2, multiply it by x minus 6, our GCF times what's left, and get x minus 2 times x minus 6. There's one more special case that we want to look at, and this is a trinomial where the value of a is greater than zero. If we look at this problem, we can tell right off the bat that there is no GCF because there's no shared value between 4, 16, and 15, and they don't all have an x value. 
namely the 15, is missing an X. So we don't have to worry about pulling out a GCF before we do anything else. Bringing in our X factor method, let's write down our numbers. A is 4, B is 16, and C is 15. A times C will give us 4 times 15, or 60, and our value for B is 16. Now we need to start thinking about factors, so we need the factors of 60. So 60 can be broken down into 1 times 60, 2 times 30, 3 times 20, 4 and 15, 5 times 12, 6 times 10, and those are all of our factors. When we think about adding them together, we'll notice that 6 and 10 will add up to make 16. So we know our values will be positive 6 and positive 10. So let's build our equation. We have our original first term, 4x squared. We're adding in our two discovered terms, our factors, 6x and 10x. And then we have our original final term, plus 15. Now let's look at what we can factor out. I'm going to group my first two together and my second two together. If I look at 4x squared plus 6x, I notice they both share an x, as well as both 4 and 6 can be divided by 2. So I'm going to factor out 2x. 4x squared divided by 2x will give me 2x back, and 6x divided by 2x will give me a positive 3. For my second phrase, I notice that they don't share an x, but they do both share a factor of 5. So I'll factor out a positive 5. 10x divided by 5 is 2x, and 15 divided by 5 is positive 3. Since our parentheses match, we're good to move on. Factor out our 2x plus 3 common factor, and multiply it by what's left, 2x plus 5. And that's our finished result, 2x plus 3 times 2x plus 5. So always be thinking about these different special cases as you work through the problems. Whether or not they have a trinomial with a greater than 0, a trinomial with a negative a value, a trinomial that has a common GCF, or if you need to have factors that have negative numbers in them. So remember, those are all special cases that will come up as we're looking to solve and factor trinomials.